In this section, I want to talk about how to use sound in your apps, how to design it and make it so the user really enjoys it and it's not going to be annoying. So I'm not really sure how much aware you are of the sounds that you're currently using. By default, there's not a lot of elements that give you a sound when you interact with them. I provided a sample project and if you open it, launch it for the first time, you see some basic UI elements. So I have made, made this really loud, so I hope you can hear it. If you just interact with a picker, you can hear this clicking sound. When you try to type in a text field, and in this case, I toggle the keyboard, so other, if you don't see it, you use Command K. And if you type now here, you can hear this very gentle tapping sounds. And we have some variations in the tabs here. Most of the elements don't produce any sound. For example, this checkbox or a button, they don't do any sound effects. But we still can integrate some sounds for these elements if we so feel to use them. I also, for this project, provided some sample sounds. And most of them are in this folder, they are really gentle. Because they are so gentle, you might not have noticed so many sounds in your daily uh, usage of devices. So for example, if you, if I now duplicate this file, you can hear this very strong noise. I can also then move this to the bin. And then if I open my bin and click on empty, this is a very satisfying sound, I would say. And I personally, I would miss the sound if it doesn't make this crushing paper sound. Most of the sounds they use have a reference to a real world metaphor, something that makes the real sound that we would associate with it, like the paper crunching of a bin on the Facebook design page. So on facebook.design slash soundkit, Facebook provided some sample sounds and you can just try them out and see. Also, you can see that they provided different kinds of button sounds or success states. Or in the opposite direction, arrows or cancels or alerts. Or the notification. This is the default iOS for your phone. So in this section, we will have a look at how to integrate, how to play sound in Swift UI. And then we also have a look at our at the sample project I provided and see how we can integrate sounds there and at what action of the user, uh, of at what position of the user flow, it makes sense to put in some sound and what kind of sound we would have and how we can improve the design of our application with sound. Let's see how we can implement sound in our application. If you have a look in the sample project I provided, you see that in the content view, the first view that is shown is the audio test view. And here there's three main folders. So this is the use cases. This is all the views that are created specifically for this test. Then we have the helpers. So this is more general elements that you would use for multiple applications. Like for example, like the activity indicator we took from UI kit or the web view. But I also provided here the style guide information and I added the toggle style in this case and also the label view. So um, I like to integrate this in my new projects because this helps me to fast progress and just concentrate on the main application, the main content. And for our test here, this is the sound and our test view here is in the sound guide folder. The other folder that is interesting is the assets folder. So here are the assets files with the colors and the app icons, but also a folder where I already integrated some of the sounds. So you can directly here play them in Xcode with the play button here. So I have some more elements. That might or might not be very good uh, for UI, like a squeeze. I on purpose included some sounds that might not make too much sense in your UI, just to s for us to play with. So there's also applause. 
but you already hear that some of them are more loud than others so we have to take care also about the volume so now let's go to our audio test view as a first example i would like to play one of the sounds when i press on this button and the framework we are using to play sounds is av foundation but i wouldn't want to put this kind of code in my view because this is not at all what the view wants to take care of also, I want to have one class or struct that takes care of the audio, so I can use this instances in multiple of my views. So I'm creating another class here in order to use it as an observable object. So I'm creating a new file. This is a Swift file. And I'm calling this audio player. So I need to use here AV foundation. My class is named audio player. This is conforming to observable object. And what this audio player now needs is a instance of a player from our AV foundation. So I'm creating here a var player. And this is a AV audio player. I'm just creating here one that doesn't play anything because it doesn't have a sound. So when I create my audio player class, I want to initialize it and give it the right file name so it knows what to play. In this case, we are creating initializer. We need to construct a URL from our file and we are using the bundle.main.url for resource with extension. So for resource, this is the um, name of my file. So for example, if I have want to play here one of my sounds, I would need to give it this name and I also need to tell it what kind of file it is. So in my initializer, I'm already asking here, give me a name, what you want to play and the type of the sound you want to play. So both of them are strings. So now here in my bundle main URL for resource, I can handle my name and my type. This is returning me a optional URL. I'm using an if let statement to check if I have something, then I'm going to set my player in here. So if you have an audio player, you can now give it the contents of this URL. This call will throw, so we need to use a try statement and I'm going to use a do catch for this. Catch. So I'm trying to set my player to my AV audio player with this contents. If I'm not able to, I'm catching the error and I'm going to print it. Error getting audio. And I'm going to print my error dot localized description to get more information. The other thing that you that might happen be is because you, you, you're handling here strings so sometimes if you misspell something with your file names here, you won't hear anything and you don't know what happens. So I do like to include here a little print statement after my if let URL. So if this is printed, I was able to get a file. So here I'm going to print success audio file. And I'm just going to print here the name because maybe I'm because maybe I'm creating multiple of these files. So if I get in my player, I'm going to tell it to prepare to play. And I also want to tell it the volume because maybe my audio is a bit too loud. So you can set the volume and you can also use a fade duration. So that means slower increasing the volume. So in my initializer of my audio player, I'm also allowing a volume input value, which is a float. But for this one, I'm preparing a default value because this we can just play it with normal volume and see if this is okay or not. So when I set my volume, I set it to the volume for my initializer and my fade duration is zero. I now created a player, but I didn't actually play it. You can play this player by telling the player to play, but we don't want to do that in the initializer. We don't want to do that when the view is created. This is not even when it's visible, when it's created. So I'm just leaving this in here so you see what the problem is. So I go back to my 
test view and I so now my audio test view I need to create a observable object observable observed object var player and this is a audio player and now here I can tell it the name and the type so I'm using my one of my sound 56 which is a double a v ah, and these are strings and I also like to do that in debug preview because then I see my print statement if it was able to create this sound so you heard the sound and then the view was updating. This is because I'm already initializing it and when it's initialized, this is played some case and it can happen that it's actually playing the sound before my view is rendered and before I see something. So it's not a good idea to start playing so early. We go back and just take this one out. So I'm removing my player start playing in the initializer. I save and go back to my view. And now when I press this play button, going to name this now play sound here in my button action I can say self dot player dot player dot play this is really not a good uh, I use debug preview so I see my so you see I have my print statement that tells me oh you have a sound file so just make sure you also have this and now I can if I tap on the sound button you can hear the sound because I also included here the volume I also exposed here the volume I can just decrease the volume to half and the good thing is because I have the standard UI elements I can just make try and see if I'm a lot louder than my um, other elements I just want to make sure I'm not overly emphasizing this I'm trying to make a subtle a gentle little hint with my sound so I'm guessing I'm still a little bit too loud so I'm decreasing my volume again and now I have the feeling now I have the feeling these two sounds of my standard sound system is on a similar volume as the sound I implemented now so this seems to be on a good way so maybe we try another one of the sounds. So now when I create my audio player here, I am going to use the applause, one of the applause, which is up app 31. Now I press. But the problem, this, this is a lot longer and I cannot stop it once it started. If I want to now stop this here, I can ask to stop my player. So I'm going to create another button which is just for stopping it. I'm calling this pause sound and my player is not supposed to play, it's supposed to pause in this case. I can play the sound and I can pause it. I can continue by pressing on play. Well, I actually want to have just one button that says that switches between play and pause. Since it's a little bit more logic, I don't want to really do this kind of code in here. I prefer to keep it with my player so I can reuse it. So in my audio player, I'm creating a function which is toggle. So in here, I'm checking if my player is playing. If it is playing, then I'm going to tell my player to pause. And otherwise, I'm going to tell my player to play again. So now I have this nice toggle function that I can reuse for all of the other ones. So in for this button now, I'm going to tell it that player dot toggle. So I don't need the second one. But I also want to have a display here that shows me play or pause. So I'm checking self dot player dot player is playing this is way too many playing if this is true then i'm going to display here pause and if it's false then i'm going to show here play so now i press on play and 
when I press here, I can play and pause my sound. The problem now is that my UI doesn't update. It doesn't show me the pause here. And this kind of view updating that is handled by this observable object in order for the observable object to know what kind of properties it needs to update to the view I view, we need to actually have a up add published var here. So let's try again. And you see, we get a crash because it doesn't like us to use this together. For my audio player, I'm going to change the way I'm handling this because one thing I actually don't like is to expose my player directly. So I'm making this now a private. So nobody except my audio player in here can change, for example, the file name or the volume, anything except for the function I'm exposing, like to toggle it. But I, what I want to expose is if it's playing or not. So I'm creating a published var is playing. This is a bool, and when I create this, this is false. Since this player is now private, I need to implement more functions to start, stop, and toggle this. So I'm creating a function to start, and this just tells my player to dot play. Another one to pause. So this is player dot pause. I'm not directly talking here in my toggle function to my player because I'm already implemented the start and pause functions. So if it's playing, I'm going to use pause. If it's not playing, I'm using start. I also want to set my is playing property every time I'm starting and stopping here. So I'm saying is playing is if I'm start, this should be true. And if I pause, I should tell is playing to false. So when I toggle, I'm directly checking this property. If is playing is true, then I pause and otherwise I start. So I save. So now I have to change my UI. So I'm still asking my player to toggle, but if I want to change my display, I'm using myself dot player is playing. If it's playing, then pause, show pause. And if it's false, then show play. So now it's not playing. So it shows me play. I can now test my audio player in preview. And if I click on play sound, my UI view updates to show me pause. I can hear the sound. So you see now we both managed to show the right display and also to play it and pause it. What you have might have noticed is if the sound is playing and I press on stop, it abruptly stops and it abruptly starts again. So maybe I want to have this a little bit smoother and we can use this with fade duration here. So when I pause it, I can also have one more function, which is smoothly pausing it. So this is func pause smoothly duration and I want to here be able to set the duration of this slowly decreasing sound. This is a double and this is, I'm going giving here a default value of zero. So this is again really abruptly stopping the sound. So in this function call, I'm going to tell my player to change the volume. This is set volume and the volume if it's paused is zero and the time interval is my duration. The problem, if I do this, once I have used this pause smoothly, my volume is always set to zero, so I won't hear anything. This is why every time I'm starting again, I have to make sure to reset my volume. So I have to keep reference of the volume I have. So I'm going to have here another property, which is the volume. This is a float. So I'm going to set myself dot volume to my volume that I that I use here in my initializer. So I have a reference of this volume. When I start my player again, I can just set reset my volume. 
So here I'm setting the volume to my volume. So to the reference I have kept and the duration is zero because I want to go back to the normal one. So now if I toggle, I can just, instead of my pause, I can use here my pause smoothly. I can here use my pause smoothly and I'm going to make a really long transition period of half a second so we can hear the difference. The other thing I have to do in my pause smoothly is to again set my is playing to false. So I save and now we test this. Uh, we have a test listen in our preview. So when I pause, it was going down very smoothly. You can also do the same if you're restarting the sound. Sometimes if you want to use a sound and you don't want to cut it off really appropriately, you might also use some kind of this fade duration. So we created now this nice little audio player file. The next thing I want to do is try to see if we can use this sound for our toggle. And here you see it's kind of, I would need to have an action call that tells me when this toggle is on or off. So it's kind of hard for me to implement it here, but we can change the toggle style and per default always implement this sound. So we had one of this toggle style and I created a secondary toggle style. So this was one of my toggles. So we have a look at the styles we defined earlier. So we have a primary toggle style and this looks more for me more like we should try it. So we are going to implement our sound for primary toggle style. I will define my audio player. Uh, this is observed object var player and I'm creating an audio player. Now we have to select the sound we want to play. So we have a look. This lo sounds good. It's a cigarette lighter one. So I'm using the cigarette lighter. <clears throat> so I have this sound player in my toggle style, but we need to now check where we want to start playing this. And you see here we have the on tap gesture when we switch this toggle to on or off. So when we switch, we also want to play a sound. So in here I'm saying self.player.start. But maybe this is a little bit too much sound and I actually prefer just to highlight the fact when I'm toggling to on. So in this case, I would check if the new state is on or if the previous one is off. So I'm only doing is if my configuration dot is on and actually if it's not on, so I need to use the negative, only then I'm playing the sound. So now if I go to the off state, it's not playing. So you see, we can also include sounds for our styles. So in my audio test view for my toggle, I'm going to use here my primary toggle style. So now you see we have this nice toggle, but maybe it's a bit loud. I'm just going to decrease this in my audio test view. I'm using this scroll view here as a reference for the sound volume. And these seem to be now quite similar on the same range. So this one is not too uh, annoying. The next thing is since we included the sound in our toggle style to also try to see if we can use it in our button style. So for our button style, we had also some button style and I had, so we're going to implement the sound also for our button style here. I'm using my advanced button style, so I'm clicking on jump to definition. I'm again creating a player. So this is a observed object var player. This is the audio player. And just for the fun of it, I'm using this time the bottle pop two. Bottle pop two. The file type is WAV. 
every time my user taps on this button, I'm going to play the sound. So I'm telling myself that player to start. So I'm going to test. So these two are my advanced button styles. So I guess this is a little bit loud. I'm going to change the volume to 0 0.2. Okay, this sounds okay. Let's try to see this in comparison to our normal UI element. So the sound seems to be all right, maybe a little bit uh, over the top. And this is why I also provided you with some sound examples for more gentle sounds. I think click one is nice. So just drag this file in my sound folder. I have to click on copy items if you need it and create folder reference. So now I have this click one, which I can use for my button. This is click one. And these were not really loud, so I'm going to use the full volume and we'll see. So save and try this. It's maybe still a little bit loud, so I'm going to go back to my button style and decrease the volume to half. This seems to be for me now quite okay and not too annoying. What is important now is that in the simulator you're using the speaker of your MacBook and they're usually really good in comparison to the phone. So the best thing is to run it on device and just try it, the sound, also try it in more noisy environments. Because if it's not distinct enough, you won't hear it from the, compared to the background noise. And also some of the frequencies with the speakers don't work very, very well. So it is a good idea to test it on the device. Since we are now able to implement some sounds in our application, let's have a look at the sample project and see where we can use it to improve the user experience. So please go in the content view and comment out the part with the audio test view and include the content view where I use the onboarding view and a main view. And then now let's run this and see what it does. For this project, I included the onboarding experience we designed in the interactive section. And for this, we can now play a sound every time this animates, or we can just play one sound that goes through all of the slides until I press the done button and then I want to stop this sound. For example, if you have a meditation app, you would have some calming music already for the onboarding to get the user into your app experience. And this is obviously a test view, but we just have a look at how we can now include this sound here. So we're, I'm going to stop my simulator and we have a look at the use cases folder under onboarding. So in the onboarding view, I want to now play a sound and I want to play it as soon as it appears. So first we need to create instance of our player again. This is a observed object var player. This is a audio player. And now we need to decide what we want to play. So luckily I implemented, I put in some very strange music. Um, so this is might not, maybe the Click no, fireworks no, gentle thoughts. Okay, this might be a little bit heavy, but let's try and see how we can use this. Let's try how it feels if you use it actually on your device, in your hands. So I'm using here gentle thoughts one. This is a MP3. And I probably should already decrease the volume. So in this case, when this view appears, I want to start it. So I'm going to call my on appear. And here I'm going to say self.player.start. 
And when this disappears, I also want to stop it. So I'm going to use my on disappear call. And here I'm saying self dot player dot pause smoothly. So we run again. Yeah, it's really, really heavy. Maybe it's not the kind of environment you want to, it's not the kind of mood you want to create. So let's try to stop this and let's go to our main view and press done. And you see my music stops. Since I'm only showing this onboarding once, the user completes this. The next time I don't see it. So definitely need to decrease the sound. I'm decreasing the volume again and I'm deleting the app. So we see the onboarding again. Delete app. So I run again. Yeah, maybe you have a look at a more suitable music. Something more fun. But you see, we can easily just implement a background sound for your application just to get the user directly in your app. So now let's have a look at the main part in our view. So this is the uh, emoji list we created in our navigation section. And you can go to these details and add this as a favorite. And you see here, this is one of the animations we did. In our emoji list, you can create, uh, you can add more emojis. So I can go to my emoji list and add a banana and then press on add. And you see, I have now one more element. I can also swipe to delete. And here I'm also showing a alert to make sure that the user really wants to delete this because my data is precious and I don't want to lose it. Sometimes people do this by accident, so I can just not delete it. And the settings, this is the forms view we created in the controls section. So here we have the terms of use and privacy policy and we click on them. We use a web view to load a website. So here I'm again using the Apple website. Usually you would use your own website with the right content. So now let's think of where we could use our sound here. One of the things that I think would be nice is when you add a new emoji. If you have now this new emoji and you press on the button here, which is hidden now, not a good design. So I can also move this up a little if I want to. When I add this emoji, I want to have a ping sound. So now the question is, when do I play this sound? Do I play the sound when I press the add button? Or should I lock this event to the array of my emojis to make sure it really only happens when I have a new element? And this is what we'll do. We'll check our elements and if you receive a new one, we will, we will play this sound. So we have to go in our emoji list view. So this is in our emoji list view folder in the, our emoji list. Okay, I have to, this is our, I don't know what it does, but maybe I should stop to use the player in my onboarding. Not really sure where the bug is. Uh, it's playing it now multiple times, so I have to restart Xcode. Okay, let's let's have a look at our emoji list. So I want to know now when a new emoji is added. So I have here a navigation view with my list items. I have here implemented the on delete and the rest is just the navigation items. Also how to show the popover and the alert if in case uh, the user wants to delete it. So at the end of here, I'm going to add a on receive. So this view wants to receive my emoji list. So this is the emoji data and my emojis. So here I have in my output, I get uh, the new array of emojis. I'm using here a print statement to see, just to test if we get called at the right moments. 
changed emojis to so I'm going to run this in debug preview. So now if I delete one, you see I get my print statement here. And if I add one, I can also write here text. And in this case, I'm getting called again. Now I'm seeing that I have a new element. But I'm also, if you scroll up, I'm also getting this call when I start my the first time this view. So we have to take care of the situations. And so we have to take care that we don't make the sound when the view appears for the first time. And we also now have the problem how to distinguish which sound we want to play for the, if, if the user deletes an element or if he creates one. So we would actually want to have two different sounds in this case. So I'm going to create two sounds now so we see them. So these are observable, observed objects var delete sound. And here I'm going to use my audio player. And we have to now find something that is... So if I, for example, use the water drop. This one I probably can use for introducing a new element, so I can already use that. I'm going to I need two of these, so I have a delete sound and an insert sound. So for the insert, I'm going to test now my water drop. This is of type WAV, and for the volume, I'm starting with one. So I can use. Beep. This does not sound the pop sound. Maybe pop too. So we are going to use for we start by using the bottle bottle pop two. So we have now our two sounds, but we need to decide when to play them. So when I receive here my emojis, I want to know if I should play the delete or insert and I have no idea if, if there was one added or not. So we're going to change our data model from our emoji data here. I'm going to go jump to the definition. So I have here two functions that handle the delete and also the add. So the moment I'm changing this here, I would be sure that I have now a new element. Also, if you have a network call and you receive data, then you also know, okay, now I should play it. And since I need to link this to my view, I need to use here a published property. Var. And the first one is delete number. And this is a int. And we start by zero. And I'll tell you in a minute why I use this too. So I need a second one published var insert number int zero. So I save this and then we go back to our view, to our imagery list. So instead of directly hooking to my emojis, I'm going to hook up to my delete, my two delete and insert number. So let's start with insert number. So here I received a number. Since I want to make sure I don't make this sound on the first appearance, I'm going to say that if my number is only zero, then I'm not playing it. If it's higher than one, I'm going to play it. If out is larger than zero, then I'm going to play myself dot insert sound dot start. So when this is created, the insert number is zero. But the moment I add one, I'm just saying here that my insert number is increased by one. So when I add this new element, this insert number is updated. It, since it's updated, the observable object knows about it and tells the view. And like this, the view also receives the new value and it gets the new output here. And since I increased it by one, it's now higher than one and this is executed. Every time I'm adding a new element, this number increases, but I don't really care. I just need to make sure I'm always called. Um, so let's try this. I'm going to run this in the simulator. So I'm adding here a new 
and you saw you heard my sound maybe I'm going to toggle the keyboard so I have a reference again so this is a very distinct one but actually I like it you can play with the other ones and let's now also include the sound for our delete on receive of our self dot emoji data dot delete number I need to subscribe to that publisher so dollar sign the output the number of this one is the same it also has to be higher than zero and in this case because I'm updating a delete I'm going to call my delete sound to start so now I just need to make sure that I'm changing my delete number every time an element is deleted. So in my emoji data model, and the reason that I have now here two functions is because I'm showing this in my popover. And this function here is just to help me to display the right emoji when this alert is showing. And delete happens in this function here. So if I remove this here, I'm going to say my delete number to increase by one. So now let's see and run this in the simulator. So now if I swipe to delete, I see my, do you really want to delete it? And you see here now my whale and you hear the delete plop. So I'm not really sure if my two sounds make actually sense. Well, I think it's actually quite nice. You can also have something more crunchy for delete. Um, so for example, we have a glass break one. So let's just try a different sound for delete. And this is the glass break one. This might be a little bit loud. <laughs> Yes, it's probably a little bit loud, but it's actually making the right impression that something is gone or destroyed. Yeah, I guess this is about the right volume. For more fine tuning, I would probably now have to check this on the device to make sure I'm not too off. Let's go for the next example where to use a sound. If you go to one of these emojis and you press here add to favorites, you see that we have this nice animation of the success and maybe I want to also make a sound here when this appears. So we have to look at how I implemented this. So this is in the emoji profile view. And here you see geometry reader that shows this check animation view. So when the user taps on my add to favorites button, I'm toggling my show message property up here. And if this is changed, this check animation view is updated and the offset of this check animation view was so much that you couldn't see it. So when you press show message, it just moves back into the visible area of the view. So I don't really have a possibility to say when this check animation view appears and the user presses on the add to favorites, then I can make this sound. So first I have to decide what kind of sound I play and I'm creating my observed object var success sound. And this is a audio player. And here I need to have something successfully, something high pitched. So just for the fun of it, we can use So this wine glass click too seems to be okay, but I was also try the squeeze toy one. If you have an application which is more for children, this might be a super fun thing to do to show a success. Something they bought and just with the squeaky toy. So I go in my emoji profile view and here I'm going to say that I want to have the squeeze toy one. I'm going to decrease the volume because I already know this is maybe over the top. I have now my audio player and then the user now presses here on the button to show the message. I'm going to say self dot success sound dot dart. So I, in the simulator, I go to one of my detail views. I press on out. 
sorry. <laughs> this is a clear moment of over-engineering. <laughs> sorry. One thing that you notice <laughs> is that... <laughs> okay, I have to change the sound. I cannot do this seriously. So I'm using the wine glass clink 2. Wine glass clink 2. Okay, I try again. Just pay attention at the moment when you hear the sound and when you see the view. So here, the moment I'm pressing on this button, I already hear the sound. But I want to have the sound a little bit later, so synchronize is better with my check mark here appearing. So what I need to do is I need to delay my sound. I could now implement this code here, but maybe I want to also have a delay in some other cases. So I'm going to add one more function to my audio player. So I have start and now I'm going to implement here func start with delay and this is a double, I need to check. So what I want to do, I still want to call my start function but only after I waited a little bit. So I need to create a deadline and uh, what I'm going to do is I use a dispatch time that is now and I'm just going to add my delay. And now I'm using the dispatch queue dot main. And in this case, I'm going to execute after a deadline. And this is the deadline I defined just above. And after this deadline is passed, I'm going to call myself dot start. So now we go back to our emoji profile view where we used this start sound. And here I am going to use Instead of just playing it, I'm going to use the start with delay and I'm using 0.5 just because my animation is set to 0.5. So let's see how we can tweak the exact timing of our sound. So I press the add to favorites. And it's actually, this seems to be much nicer. So, so I go in here, I go to my add to favorites. Maybe this is a little bit too late, so I go just in between. No, I think it was better before. So just after half a second. So. Yeah, this is uh, quite nice. But you also see, I only play the sound once when I include this view. When it, it disappears, this is happening when I just tap on it. I'm not playing the sound again, which really wouldn't make sense. Including sound when you have this kind of success states that you want to show is, I think, a very nice idea because it's very sparingly used sound and emphasis the user's success. We can even do this a little bit more. In our previous sections, we also included a more fun animation for a game. I also added this to this project and this is the game app success. I just put in back this game app success and I comment out the animation we just saw. So I'm just uh, commenting out here my check animation view. So I type again. You see here now the other animation we did, which was more appropriate if you have a game and the user won or finished a level. This animation would also profit a lot from some sound, but this sound I'm using right now doesn't really make sense. It's too short and not so, it's just not fun enough. So let's see if we can find something more <laughs> fun. So maybe this kind of applause would help a lot. So I'm using the app 10. So instead of my wine glass clink for my success sound, I'm using the applause 10, which is a of type MP3. Because it's also very loud, I'm also using a lower volume. So I run. This is actually quite nice. It's probably a little bit too long. And now I have to make, because it's also longer, I have to make sure to also stop it. So in this case, when the user taps on the success animation, 
I'm dismissing this view and I'm also going to tell my success sound to pause smoothly. So we have our nice animation with the uh, quite nice with the fun sound and when I dismiss my sound stopped. So you can try to see if one of the sounds I added is a little bit more appropriate for you. So you can have fun with this and try different sounds for different kinds of animations. As a last example for where to include sound, I want to have a look at the settings. So we go on the settings view. I am loading this web pages for my terms of use and privacy policy. And maybe I want to have when once the view is loaded, I just want to have this sound that says this just like like ping, telling the user, oh, yeah, yeah, now I have it. Because sometimes you're Oh, well, at least sometimes I, if I wait too long for the loading, I'm just paying attention to something else and I don't realize I have actually my page now shown. So just a little bit sound would be nice for me to recognize, oh, it's actually there now. So let's have a look at the view that is presenting this website. So this is the web active view. Let me just go there. So I would now need to react to this is loading. And the web active view is actually the owner of this is loading. But in order to connect this easier to my audio, I would like to uh, let my audio player be the owner of this is loading because then it can a lot easier react to it. So I don't really want to add this to my audio player where I already have quite a few functions, um, which I made for UI elements. So I'm creating another audio player. It's a new Swift file. And this is my loading audio player. I also need to use AV foundation. So this is a class loading audio player. This is a observable object. And since this is supposed to be the owner of my is loading, I use a published var is loading. This is a Boolean property. And when we initialize this, it's probably not loading. So this is false. I can use a lot of the other audio player, like I also need to have a AV audio player instance. And during my initialization, I also want to create my audio player with this sound file. I don't need to set here any volumes. What I now need to do is I need to react to changes in my is loading. And then every time my is loading changes from false to true, I would need to ask my player to start and stop. This kind of data flow is very easy done with combine and publisher streams. So I'm using, I'm importing my combine. I also need to uh, keep a reference to my subscription. So I have my subscriptions. This is a set of any cancelable and in the beginning, I have none of them. So now in my initializer, I'm going to subscribe to my is loading so I can react to any changes. So dollar is loading dot sync. I receive the value is loading or not. So I'm calling this loading. If is loading is true, I'm going to tell myself dot player to play. So now I have the information when it's loading and when not. But the thing is, I actually want to make sure that I play the sound once I receive data, so which means I, this is the moment when I switch back from is loading to is not loading anymore. My new value should be false self dot player dot play. So this is my new value, but I also want to make sure that my old value was true. So I use a end self dot is, is loading. So this is the old one is true. So only then I will do this. So now I just have to make sure I keep my subscription. So I use store in subscription. Okay, now we are fine. And I need to go to my web view again. And my web view is in the integration folder. And it's the web active view. Here I'm using my player again, observed object var loading finish sound. And this is now a loading audio player. I have to decide what kind of sound I want to play. And I think I go with something longer. 
Maybe sound 118 uh, is good. So I'm using sound 118 and type WAV. So I don't need to have the state property anymore with is loading because I'm going to bind everything now to my loading is finished sound dot is loading. And here's the same loading finish sound dot is loading. Just see. Uh, and also I have to tell it here loading finish sound is loading. So now if I go to my settings to my terms of use, you see or you hear that uh, you, well, you, so you see the activity indicator and the moment it disappears, you can also hear the sound. So this is a nice small hint of the loading state. It's a small hint for me to recognize that my web view is now loaded. So it's a nice little trick to include a sound for this. And since I added this to my web active view, every time I'm using this, so for both of these terms of use and privacy policy, I have this sound now. So we have now gone through a couple of examples where we use sound for our onboarding just as a background sound. Then we use sound to highlight the fact that in our emojis list, we added or removed some of the emojis and we use different sounds, very sm uh, small hints. We also just used one of the sounds for success state to make our app a lot more fun for the user and delightful. The last example for including sound was when we loaded a web page and to play a sound once the loading is finished. Loading feedback sounds you might do if you have to go through a longer process like uh, signing in for example and just want to give the user a bing you did it. Uh, or paying or loading of books, for example, of movies. So this might be a quite a nice thing for just making your app a little bit more playful. If you liked what you learned and you want to see more, check out my full course. You can find the link in the description box. I am Karen, a physicist, iOS developer and design enthusiast. Thank you for listening and see you next time.